Hi there. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is Stephanie. I'm going to be your journey reader today. Um, we're going to be reading through Genesis chapter 10 through 12. Let's get started. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks and praise for this day, Lord. We just thank you so much for um, the hunger that we have to know your word, Lord, and know you through your word. I pray that you bless every one of us who are striving to know you better. I pray that you give us ears to hear and an open heart, Lord, to receive your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get started. Genesis chapter 10, the table of nations. This is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's sons, who themselves had sons after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. The son of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togarmah. The sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittites, and the Rhodonites. From these, the maritime people spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations each with their own language. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, Canaan. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sapta, Rama, Sapteca. The sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of the, the kingdoms were Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, and Kalne, and Shinar. From that, the land he went to Syria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ir, Kela, Rezin, which is between Nineveh and Kela which is the great city. Egypt was the father of the Ludites, the Anamites, the Lehabites, the, Naf the Naphtahites, the Pathrosites, Casulahites, from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphtarites. Canaan was the father of Sidon, the firstborn, and of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Jagash, Shishites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemarites, and Hamathites. Later, the Canaanite clans were scattered, and the borders of Canaan reached the Sidon toward the Qatar, Gerar, as far as Gaza, and then towards Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, as far as Lacia. These are the sons of Ham by their clans and the languages in their territories and nations. Sons were also born of Shem, whose older brother was Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the sons of Eber. The sons of Shem, Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether and Meshach. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah, and Shelah was the father of Eber, and two sons were born to Eber. One was Peleg, because of the time on earth it was divided. His brother was Jokan, Joktan. Joktan was the father of Almadad, Shelef, Hazarmaveth, Jerah, Hardaram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Ibemal, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All of these were sons of Joktan. The region where they lived stretched from Misha towards Sephar in the eastern hill country. These are the sons of Shem by their clans and languages and their territories and nations. These are the clans of Noah's sons, according to their lines of descent, 
within their nations. From these, the nations spread out over the earth and after the flood. Now, the whole world was in one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled down there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and br bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. They said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the whole earth. But the Lord came down to that city and the tower and the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing can plan they plan to do will be impossible for them. So come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why that is called Babel because their Lord confused, their Lord confused the language of their whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them all over the face of the whole earth. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was two years old, he became the father of, I'm sorry, <laughs> two years after the flood, when Shem was a hundred years old, he became a father of Ar Arphaxad. And after he became the father of Ar Arphaxad, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad had lived 35 years, he became the father of Selah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxad lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber would had when Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. After he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Ru. And after he became the father of Ru, Peleg lived 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived 32 years, he became the father of Sarug. And after he became the father of Sarug, Ru lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sarug had lived 30 years, he became the father of Nahar. And after he became the father of Nahar, Sarug lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. And when Nahar had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah. And after he became the father of Terah, Nor Nahar lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran. This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran and Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abram and, nah Abram and Nahar both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai and the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran and the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur to the Chaldeans, of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled down there. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. The Lord had said to Abram, 
Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. And I will make in you into a great nation. And I will bless you and I will make you a great name. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, all of the possessions they had accumulated and the people that they have acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah in Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on towards the hill east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward Negev. Now there was a famine in that land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because of the famine was so severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife, and then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say that you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was very beautiful. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh and she was taken into the palace. He treated Abram well and for her sake. And Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarai. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say that she is my sister? So I took her as my wife. So then here's your wife, take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way, and his wife, and everything that he had. That was Genesis chapter 10 through 12. Thank you so much for joining me today. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you, and happy reading.